Hello and welcome. This is a video for Required Practical 3 for AQA GCSE Science for Combined Science Biology students and Triple Science Biology students as well. This is called osmosis. The whole point of this practical is to investigate the effect of a range of concentrations of salt or sugar solutions on the mass of plant tissue. By plant tissue we could use a variety of plant tissues but we often use potato. As a recap, osmosis is the diffusion of water from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution through a partially permeable membrane. This is the definition that they use in the specification. For our experiment, the following equipment is required. We have plant tissue, as we said, often potato, but it could be other tissue like carrot. We have something called a cork borer, which helps us to make very precise cylindrical shapes. We have a balance to measure mass. We have a knife and a white tile to help us cut potato pieces to similar lengths or same lengths. We have a paper towel for drying and we have a range of sugar solutions. These solutions could be salt solutions as well, but for our example, we're using sugar solutions. So step one, we add 30 centimeters cubed of a 0.8 moles per decimeter cubed sugar solution to a boiling tube. And then we repeat this with a 0 0.6, a 0 0.4, and a 0 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed sugar solutions. We can use distilled water, in other words, pure water, to give us a concentration of 0, 0.0 moles per decimeter cubed. We cut five cylinders of potato of equal size using the cork borer and a knife, and then we dry the potato cylinders using the paper towel. We use the balance and record the mass of each potato cylinder and we place one cylinder in each of our five different tubes. After 24 hours we remove the potato cylinders from the solution, we dry each potato cylinder with a paper towel and we record the new mass of the potato cylinders. So to give an idea this is what the experiment will look like once it's set up so we can just put that there for reference. And here is a set of results. We have the concentration of sugar solution in moles per decimeter cubed on the left. We have the mass of the potato before and after, and we have the change in mass and the percentage change in mass. We need to be able to calculate the change in mass and the percentage change in mass as well. So let's see how we can do that. To calculate the change in mass, that's a very simple case of the mass after 24 hours minus the mass before. For our first example of 0, 0.0 moles per decimeter cubed, it's 3.4 minus 3.1 equals 0 0.3 grams. So we can put that in our table. And to calculate the percentage change in mass, we do the change in mass divided by the mass before 24 hours, and we multiply that by 100 to get the percentage. So for our first example, it's 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.1 times 100, which gives us 9.67. So that's 9.67 or 9.7 percent if we round to one decimal place. We can add that to our table. Now I might suggest you pause here and have a go at all the others and then we'll get back to it in a moment. So hopefully you've got these values for your change in mass and your percentage change in mass and once we've got those what we can do is draw a graph of the results. We would use two axes, but remember we have a negative part of the axis, so the x-axis is a little higher up on our graph, so we can have a negative range. And we're going to plot the independent variable, which is the concentration of sugar solution, versus the dependent variable, which is the percentage change in mass. We calculate the percentage change in mass because the potato at the beginning has different masses, so this will allow us to take that into account and allow us to compare. So the percentage change in mass goes on the y-axis and the concentration goes on the x-axis. Once we've got those, we can add our numbers, evenly spaced of course for graphs, and then we can plot our points. So there's our points plotted for the different concentrations, and we can join those points up with a line. Now what's very important here is this point where the line crosses the x-axis this is where there is no loss or no gain of mass. The percentage change in mass is zero. The point where the line crosses the x-axis is where the potato neither lost nor gained mass. That means there is no net movement of water, 
So the concentration inside and outside the potato tissue must be equal. So this tells us the concentration inside the potato tissue. In our graph here, it's 0 0.24 moles per decimeter cubed. This section here, where we have a positive change in mass, this is because the solution inside the potato is more concentrated than outside, and therefore water moves into the potato by osmosis. For this region here, where there is a loss of mass, everything after 0 0.24, the solution outside the potato is more concentrated than inside the potato, and that means water moves out of the potato by osmosis. The final point to make for this slide is that we have the control variables, and these are the temperature, the type of potato or the type of plant tissue that you're using, and the age of the potato or plant tissue. So that's how we do the experiment and deal with the data from this experiment for osmosis. Let's have a look at some exam questions. So here are some exam questions. It might be worth pausing here to go through the questions and then we'll go through the answers in a moment. So for question one, a student investigated the effect of different sugar solutions on potato tissue. Here are the results. And here is a set of results in the form of a table. For question 1.1, it says calculate the value of X in the table above. Value X is the percentage change for the 0 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed concentration. And we would do that just in the way that we practiced the moment ago. It's the change in mass divided by the starting mass times 100. So we would do 0 0.15 divided by 1.35 times 100. And that gives us an answer of 11.1%. So we could put that in our answer space there. 1.2, why did the student calculate the percentage change in mass as well as the change in grams? The answer for that is because the potato tissue has different masses at the start, and so the results can be compared if we use a percentage change in mass. For question 1.3, it says explain the result for the potato tissue in the 0 0.6 moles per decimeter cubed solution. So this is asking why we have a loss in mass for the 0 0.6 moles per decimeter cube solution. The answer for that is the solution outside the potato was more concentrated than inside. We could also say there was a lower concentration of water molecules outside the potato tissue than outside. And that means water moved out of the potato tissue by osmosis. And that would get you the three marks for that question there. 1.4 says, explain why the potato pieces at 0 0.8 moles per decimeter cubed was different from the result to 0 0.6 moles per decimeter cubed. So we're looking at these two results here. Why was there a bigger loss in mass for the 0 0.8 compared to the 0 0.6? Well, the reason for that is there's a bigger concentration difference between the solution and the potato pieces at 0 0.8 moles per decimeter cubed. This means more water moved out of the potato tissue at 0 0.8 moles per decimeter cubed than 0 0.6. And so we have a bigger loss in mass, so therefore there's a bigger negative number. Question 1.5 says, suggest two sources of error in this experiment, two things that could cause an error in those results. We have the idea that the water may not have been wiped from the potato cylinders before weighing, that would affect the mass. We have the possibility of evaporation of water from the tubes that might change the concentration. And that will give us two possible sources of error. And the last one is the concentration of the solutions. So the ticks here indicate where the marks are for the different questions. Remember for question 1.5, there's three possible things you could say, but a maximum of two marks. So that's it. The osmosis required practical with some exam questions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.